If you would like to know a somewhat overlooked cause of starting and running problems such as surging on this type of Briggs & Stratton lawnmower other than the diaphragm, then keep watching. And just before I get stuck into the overlooked cause, I'll just quickly list, in no particular order, some of the reasons, in my opinion, that I've come across as the reasons that can cause this type of problem. I'll quickly do this because you might pick up something you didn't know before, and also so that we've established that the cause I'm about to tell you isn't the only thing that can cause this kind of problem. So then, I'll quickly flash through the first few points. So we'll start with the air filter. They really do get clogged, preventing the high volume of air coming into the engine and causing problems like this. The next is the governor springs, and these are designed to work together. If the large one is missing, the engine probably won't run at all. And if the small one's missing, you tend to get running problems. And I have in the past found the engine to surge if this spring is missing. And now stale fuel, something I see year after year, particularly when people take the mowers out of the garden sheds after winter storage, there's been fuel left in the fuel tank. The chances are this fuel will not combust correctly in the engine. And then we move on to damage of the primer bulb. If there's any tiny holes in the primer bulb, it will leak in air. And this air will be drawn into the engine, affecting the air to fuel ratio, and then there'll be running problems. Something that these engines are quite famous for, the diaphragms can go rigid and less flexible, reducing their abilities to control the fuel. The fuel tanks can get clogged up with dirt and crud which can be drawn into the carburettor. And this of course means the carburettor can get clogged and reduce its efficiency. Due to warping of the components, slight gaps can appear in places like this in between the two bolts where air can be drawn in and fuel can spill out. The o-ring on the intake side of the carburettor that fits onto the intake manifold can sometimes get degraded and damaged or even forget to be put back when reassembled. Sometimes as well, when the carburettor is fitted back to the machine, this can slip out of place. And in any of those cases, air can be drawn in at the junction between the carburettor and the tube. And that of course means that the engine won't run right. And that brings me on nicely to the overlooked cause that I wanted to explain. Now I'm not saying it's overly common that this happens, I'm just saying it is overlooked and it's hardly ever checked. And that is the intake tube itself. In the past I have had problems with these tubes because when we do have running issues with these types of carburettor, generally we go straight to the diaphragm. I've overlooked this issue several times in the past and I now always make a habit of checking this every time I repair one of these carburettors. And the most thorough way to check this is to remove the recoil housing and take a look right across the length of the intake tube. I've had these crack, little tiny cracks sometimes where they leak in air in an unnatural place and that messes around with the fuel to air ratio. And so the engine just will not run right. Also I've had these bolts come loose, allowing air to come in below where it connects to the engine. And again, that's going to cause running issues. So it's well worth taking a good look at this and make sure it's in good order. And if there is any cracks or damage, then you can easily get hold of one of these, they're readily available. Okay, so I hope that's helped. And remember, this is just the causes that I've found personally with this type of engine. There are many reasons why any engine, not least this engine, could fail. Thank you for watching.